Ah, uh, hello. Didn't see you there. Well, I'm just hanging out here uh, in St. Luke's place in the West Village, which is where we're going to be doing a tour today. Yeah, the West Village is kind of Greenwich Village. It's you know, we'll get into all that, but a uh, really pretty part here on the west side of uh, downtown Manhattan. Uh, before we start, do me a favor, check out the Patreon. It's a huge help. Uh, got some extras on there, help fund these things. Also, to like the video, give it a little thumbs up, huh? A little thumbs up, that's always helpful, and uh, subscribe. You know, <clears throat> gonna about to dump a lot of information on you, so uh, subscribe to the video, that'd be great. Uh, uh, all right, well, we're gonna start here in a second. Uh, Stewie, how are you doing? Doing good, doing good. What's new, Stewie? Just, uh, you know, walking around, enjoying this uh, good New York weather before that winter kicks in. Yes, we got a beautiful day here, so it's gonna be a nice walk. Um, I don't know, I guess, I guess that's uh, pretty much it. What do you think, should we start this thing? Let's do it. Love the enthusiasm, baby, love it. Let's go. So we're walking right now next to St. Luke's Place. St. Luke's Place made famous by the TV show, uh, The Cosby Show, uh, where it was like the exterior of the place where he lived. Uh, you guys ever heard of Bill Cosby? <coughs> Rest in peace. He's not dead, but he might as well be. Here is also too where a lot of uh, famous people, this, so this park here is called James J. Walker Park. Jimmy Walker, who was actually the mayor of New York in the late 20s, early 30s, he actually ended up resigning in 1932 because of uh, corruption. Go figure, but they called him like the, he was like the cool guy mayor. He was like, you go to boxing matches, slick his hair, go into speakeasies and stuff. He used to have a really uh, funny quote. He'd said, uh, he'd rather be a lamppost on Fifth Avenue than the mayor of Chicago. Uh, pretty cool, I can, get, I can get with that. Uh, so that's all St. Luke's place behind me. You can see all that there, all the people there. See that guy up there? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? All right, let's keep moving. So the West Village, by the way, is a little bit uh, different, distinct from Greenwich Village. So Greenwich Village is the oldest of all the villages, East Village, all that stuff. Uh, you can check it in my Greenwich Village video, you know. But Greenwich Village uh, has its name rooted in the early 1700s, when it was still a Dutch colony, I'm sorry, British colony, sorry, uh, named after Greenwich. Greenwich London, Greenwich Median Time, you guys know that? Ah, Greenwich Median Time, time zones. But later on, um, different neighborhoods started to get kind of their own vibe. Um, East Village gave itself the name in the 1950s and 60s when artists started moving in there. It used to just be an extension of the Lower East Side. And then it kind of pinned itself to the reputation of uh, Greenwich Village because of all the artists and stuff who actually left here to live there. Um, then around that same time, you had the West Village kind of doing the same thing. Now what's really considered West Village, I mean, look, different people are gonna have different definitions of this, so chill out in the comments, all right? You're gonna start typing away, all you warriors. Relax, okay? There's different, there are different definitions for these things. I tend to think of the West Village as west of 7th Avenue, which is where we are right now. Now 7th Avenue, by the way, wasn't actually an original part of, this part of 7th Avenue at least, wasn't an original part of the grid of 1811, right? The avenues which go north, south, start at 1st Avenue in the east, go to 12th Avenue in the west. The streets which go uh, east to west, start at 1st Street, just north of the house, and go all the way to the 200s at the north end. I've talked about this in every damn video we've done. Uh, but this actually wasn't here when the grid was implemented because uh, this was all an exception to the grid, which starts down at Houston Street, just to the south. The reason it was an exception, and the streets have names here, even though we're north of Houston, is because, if you want to get me on this side here so you can see all this, is because uh, people had already mapped out their streets here. You had lots of very wealthy people who were like, yeah, no thanks, don't want to deal with that. So they left it. And it was still kind of an isolated village because there was no 7th Avenue here. It wasn't until later, uh, actually in the 1900s, that 7th Avenue was finally uh, rammed through here. Oh, over here too, this is pretty cool. You can see it from here. This is a little locksmith. So that little locksmith was actually uh, opened in 1980 by a guy named Philip Mortellaro. Pretty cool, actually. Um, it's actually the smallest freestanding building in New York, or one of them at least. It's got its own, like, you know, building number and lot number. But it's interesting because uh, he's been offered, like, I think a bank, it was a couple years ago, a bank offered him, like, $3 million for that building or $2 million or something, and he turned it down. Because he said, you know what, I'm happy now. I make a good living with this now. What do I need all that for? He's like, I like coming to work. I like my job. Pretty impressive. 
You might say that locksmith has found the key to life. That was pretty good, right, Stewie? Pretty good. Pretty Thanks, man. Good. All right, we're walking. We're walking up Bedford here. To the left, you have here, this is a cool little house. This little thin house. 75 and a half Bedford. Look at that. So this was made by filling in the carriage passage for the house right next to it. And this was in 1873. In fact, uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay, very famous uh, poet and actress back then lived there. Uh, Cary Grant, uh, and also uh, William Steig, who uh, wrote, uh, who he is the illustrator who made the picture book for Shrek. Yeah, you know Shrek was based on a book. <laughs> now you can tell people that uh, Shrek the movie isn't as good as the book, you'd be that guy. So we'll keep walking here. So you may notice that it's a little quieter here. It's more tranquil, more peaceful, baby. It's quiet. You can have that too for just a few million dollars. Oh, we're walking by this house. One of the older houses in the neighborhood. See all these little federal style houses in the neighborhood. You could tell the federal style by the Flemish bond work of the brick. You can also see it from the dormers that come out of the roofs. Roofs? 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 Help me out here, Stewie. This is Cherry Lane Theater. This is pretty cool. This used to be uh, actual, like a, a silo for storing stuff that used to be farmland. This is like from the early 1800s, 1817 was put here. Um, became a brewery, a tobacco warehouse, and now it's an off-Broadway theater. Anyone who's anyone like, you know, they had like Sam Shepard plays. He, he debuted True West there, a very famous play. Um, you know, F. Scott Fitzgerald put plays up. Pablo Picasso put plays up there. And you didn't know he was a playwright, too. Oh, he probably wasn't very good, but... <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, John Malkovich, uh, Gary Sinise, Ethan Hawke, all these crazy actors got their kind of start there. So let's keep moving, baby. Come on. We got a lot of ground to cover. So it's a nice day, and we're in these quiet side streets, which is nice. You can see all the stoops. So I was saying this area to kind of separate itself off, gave itself a little different vibe of Greenwich from Greenwich Village um, because it, you know, developed its own little personality and also makes it more exclusive. Neighborhoods like to carve themselves out a little bit to make themselves a little more exclusive and fancy, baby. So this is kind of a cool story. Over here to the front, you see Chumley's. So Chumley's was a speakeasy that was put there. In the 1920s, people like F. F. Scott Fitzgerald, John Steinbeck, used to come to this place. This is 86 Bedford. There's another entrance here on Barrow Street. So what would happen was uh, when they would raid the place, the police would kind of give them a heads up, uh, and they would 86 the party. They would dump everyone out the back entrance on 86 Bedford rather than the front. 86. That's a good fact, right, Stewie? Really good. You're going to use that one, I'm sure. Next time you're on a date here, you son of a gun. You can impress your date with that. So let's get in the street here so we don't have to deal with these people. It's kind of nice that it's not too crowded right now. This area is pretty insane, actually, and you'll see why here in a second. You can see all these cool little plays. These are all buildings. Like This used to actually be like a little stable kind of thing. You see up there? It says uh, J. Goble & Co., 1865. Pretty cool. All these cool little buildings. So this is kind of funny. This corner building here, I won't spend too much time on it because it doesn't interest me that much. But this building was the building from the show Friends. This was Monica, Monica Chandler, Joey, and Rachel lived in this building. This is like the establishing shot at the beginning of all the Friends episodes. Here, come this way. Kind of crazy. And then over there on the left is where Ross lived. I guess he moved there later on in the show. And then here to the corner is one of the older houses in the neighborhood. So that house is 1822. Uh, very fancy. It's a wooden house. Back then it wasn't that fancy. But, uh, you know, it's probably worth, you know, $98 billion now. And over here you have the building, a better shot of it. That's the Friends building. OMG, totes cray. <laughs> Friends, yay. All right. Show you some other stuff here. This is Grove Court. This is pretty cool. Really pretty little spot here. These houses were built, so these were built in 1854, and it wasn't until the 1920s that they were actually made. Kind of nice, and like a little court area and all that. Um, but 
Yeah, pretty nice little area. This used to be for like the workers in the neighborhood, you know, people who like worked at the brewery and stuff like that. And today they're very fancy. In fact, probably creeping everyone over there out right now, walking in front of them. And here you have some more of the federal style houses. You have the original like iron work. You have like here where you'd put your shoes in. Yeah, look at that. You'd wipe your manure off and all your snow and stuff. That's what that's for. And uh, these were built also, too, in the 1820s, 1830s. So back then, this whole area was like, there was nothing out here. These were built as kind of like a development, like you still have in big cities today. When you go to a big city, you know, and it starts growing, the outskirts are what kind of get gobbled up, and that's what's happening here. Now we're walking to Hudson Street. Now, Hudson Street is kind of the main drag here, at least in my opinion, of the West Village. Here to the straight ahead, you have St. Luke in the Fields. Called St. Luke in the Fields because it's in the fields, it's like in the middle of nowhere. 1822, this was put here, it's a nice church. Eventually became one of Trinity uh, Church's chapels. Uh, pretty, pretty cool, huh? Trinity Church is a huge landowner here, by the way. Huge landowner here. In fact, when we started at St. Luke's place, that was all Trinity Church uh, property. And we walked, a lot of this area was, you know, like the speakeasy we walked by. Which, by the way, speakeasies now don't exist. Speakeasies were uh, unique to Prohibition. Today, they still have speakeasies. They're called speakeasies, but uh, that doesn't mean anything except that they're gonna charge you double for a drink, that's all. So that's St. Luke in the Fields, very pretty church. So I was actually named St. Luke because uh, St. Luke was the physician evangelist. And uh, remember, this whole area was settled by people who were leaving, and it was during a time of yellow fever epidemics. So, you know, health was a big thing. Also, Clement Clark Moore was one of the founders of it. Clement Clark Moore was the guy who wrote A Visit from St. Nicholas. You ever heard of that uh, poem, Stewie? I have not. You know, you know the poem, Twas a Night Before Christmas? Yes. That was him. And he was actually a huge landowner in Chelsea, which I covered in my Chelsea video. <laughs> Sick plug. But uh, he was one of the founders of that. So now we're walking north. And you can start seeing people come out because it's like midday now. It's not so bad. But a quaint a little area and all these homes, so many of these, so many of these buildings, you know, date back to like the 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, which is why this whole area is down zoned, by the way, which is interesting. Because one of the things that's happening in New York City right now is a lot of upzoning. They're taking neighborhoods like let's say for example Williamsburg in 2005 and they're taking these industrial, commercial zoned areas or small residential and upzoning them to like high density residential and everything. So, so developers and everything can take advantage and build huge condos or whatever. Uh, that's the opposite of what's happened in neighborhoods like this because here, you already have people with money here and they wanna protect their investment. They wanna protect their neighborhood. So the city listens and the city down zones them and actually puts in restrictions where you can't build certain heights, where you can't build uh, too big and all that kind of stuff. What a concept. Another thing, too, to keep in mind is that West Village is a lot of, because it's so nice here, a lot of celebs live in this neighborhood. Jim Carrey, Hugh Jackman, Sarah Jessica Parker, Matthew Broderick. Uh, let's see, Mark Zuckerberg just bought a place. Mark Zuckerberg just bought a place for like 25 million right nearby. You know, the guy who built that platform where you can go check out all your uncle's crazy political conspiracy theories. He lives here. Now we're gonna cross Charles Street. I wanna show you guys a pretty cool little house here. This is kinda of cool. We're walking a lot today, Stewie. You feel okay? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's uh, not so many people. It's quiet. It's very quiet. It's not as hectic. We're not getting yelled at or getting, at least not yet. So I wanted to show you this house. This is really cool. This is 121 Charles Street. Isn't that crazy? This is a house. This was moved here. This used to be up in the Upper East Side, Upper East Side, and they moved it here. In the 1960s, uh, this thing was moved here, and it, they call it the Good Night Moon House because Margaret Wise Brown actually lived here when she wrote that book. She's actually from New York. She's from uh, Greenpoint, but she lived in this little house when she wrote Good Night Moon, which is uh, like a kid's book. It's like where this like little you know bunny says good night to all the things in his room, and then finally says good night to the moon. Great book, you know, uh, it's not, you know, it's not crime and punishment, but you know, it's a nice little book to read, but a pretty cool little building, uh, actually moved here on a, like a truck, interesting. It's now worth $125 billion, give or take a few. Let's keep moving. And you can see too here, 
that the street signs are brown. You see it says Hudson Street. That means we are in a protected district. Whenever you see the brown street signs in New York, it means you're in a protected district. Oh. There's a bunch of protected districts in New York. Landmark Preservation Commission. I've talked about this in the past. In fact, in the Grand Central video, oh, Grand Central, check it out. I talk about how Grand Central was kind of the reason these things are able to be protected. What happened was, in 1963, I'll tell you guys the story, why not? In 1963, Penn Station was demolished. Now, Penn Station used to be this gorgeous station designed by McKim Mead and White. We've talked about Stanford White in other videos. Uh, he's the guy who was murdered on top of Mad the old Madison Square Garden, which he designed by a jealous lover. But I digress. Penn Station was demolished because Penn Central needed money. In fact, they sold the land, Madison Square Garden was built there. But when it was demolished, people were so pissed off that they uh, protest and everything. And then later on, Penn Central was gonna pretty much do the same thing to Grand Central. People were so angry about Penn that they pushed the city to landmark it. The only thing is, landmarking wasn't really much of a thing yet. So Penn Central sued. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. And they found in favor of a city's ability to protect its landmarks. Let's go, we can make this, come on. See all these fancy little brunches and stuff. I feel like I should just uh, pull up a chair and just sit down with some of these people. Oh, thanks, man. Good day. I didn't pay that guy to say that. So I had to stop here and tell you guys about this. I kind of walked right by because I was busy talking about something else, but I'm inserting this because it's that important. This is 555 Hudson Street. This is where Jane Jacobs lived. In 1947, she bought this row house and lived here till the 1960s. If you don't know who Jane Jacobs is, you gotta fix that, baby. She's one of the most important people in New York City history. She was an activist, she was an organizer, and she fought Robert Moses, one of the most powerful men in New York City history, on every crappy thing that he was trying to do to ruin Greenwich Village and to ruin Soho. She stopped the lower Manhattan Expressway, the Lomex, from being built across the island through Soho, demolishing that. She helped uh, protect Washington Square from traffic and a, and a highway being put through that. She was a hero. They should make movies about this woman, uh, you know, instead of all those Marvel movies. Why don't you make a movie about, you know, Jane Jacobs, and, and I don't know, but she's the best. So I wanted to stop here at 555 Hudson Street. This is where she lived for a very long time. Got a little plaque here, pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. All right, so here's another historic place on the left. This is Whitehorse Tavern. Looks really fancy now, good lord. This place used to be like fries and burgers and stuff, but it looks like it's gotten good. They're gonna make it fancy. It just got bought actually recently. Um, so that maybe that's why. But this has been here since 1880. This is Whitehorse Tavern. And it was actually like a place where like lo Irish longshoremen and people like that used to come because we're right next to the water now. This is where all the piers and stuff are. And they would come and hang out here and you know, but it also became very popular for artists because once again, I told you this kind of still was Greenwich Village back in the day. It didn't become West Village till later. People like, uh, let's see, uh, Famously, like Bob Dylan, Jack Kerouac used to get bounced from here all the time. Um, but also, too, this is where Dylan Thomas, they say, you know, drank his 18 shots of whiskey or something like that, and he went back to the Chelsea Hotel where he flipped into a coma and he eventually died. I don't know if it was exactly related to the, to the actual alcohol that he drank, but he died and he drank there. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, awesome, dude. I appreciate it. Take it easy. Have a good day. I don't know, I guess uh, keep watching, keep subscribing like that guy. <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess, right? All right, so over here you have Bleecker coming up and it meets here. You have Abingdon Square, which was named after one of uh, Sir Peter Warren's, uh, uh, I think it was his son-in-law or something, and that's up here to the north. Sir Peter Warren is the guy who owned a lot of this land, by the way, way back in the day. This is back when it was still British. On the other side, you have Bleecker, which was Anthony Bleecker. So Anthony Bleecker, uh, was the guy who ceded a lot of this land to the city. So Bleecker Street is named after Anthony Bleecker. He was a writer. He was actually friends with William Cullen Bryant and uh, Washington Irving. It was renamed that in, the, in like the 1820s, 1830s. Now we're working on the cobblestone. 
So this is all from back when this was like a little residential area, very quiet. This is called Bank Street. They actually had banks on it. That's why they call it Bank Street. Some of the banks that were leaving the, you know, the epidemic back in the day would set up shop here. And over here to the right, you have uh, 105 Bank Street. 105 Bank Street famously uh, was bought actually by a guy named Joe Butler, who was the drummer for the Love and Spoonful. The Love and Spoonful was a band that got popular with like the folk movement. They're the guys there, the Love and Spoonful sang the song, uh, Do You Believe in Magic? And I hope you do. Yeah, that, they sang that. So you need some money and he bought this building. A little later in the early 70s, a very famous couple lived on the top floor and that was John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Oh, but in 1972, someone broke into their apartment and they're like, yeah, we're not moving here anymore. We're not living here anymore. And they moved to the Dakota. Uh, in the Upper West Side on the Central Park West, which is where he eventually died, unfortunately. He was murdered by Mark David Chapman. But lots of pretty houses here, all being renovated and stuff. Yikes, it's gonna be not cheap to live here. Pretty cool building here. And over here to the left, you have HB Studios. You know HB Studios? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's a, an acting studio. You can learn to act there. Actor! I myself dabble in acting every now and then, you know. But people like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, I mean, like, you name it. They were actors in New York, pretty much. And Bancroft, they've all trained here some, to some extent. And Bancroft, in case you don't know, is uh, they're, they're, she's a woman from The Graduate. The Graduate with uh, Dustin Hoffman. That's the movie, I mean, people probably still don't know what it is. That's the movie where the song... Uh, Mrs. Robinson comes from. And he's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Jesus loves you more than you will know. Nice work, Tui. And here we're starting to get to the uh, western edge. Right here you have um, a lot of construction, for one. And you have here buildings that show you kind of what the High Line used to be. The High Line is a park, I covered that in, uh, in the meatpacking district and all that stuff, but it actually used to be an elevated railway here. This building shows you what it used to do. It used to go under the buildings. They used to dump all their stuff. That stuff. That is one of the worst sounds on the planet. So this used to be a building that, you know, housed, uh, you know, had the high line going through it. It used to be Bell Laboratories. The building over there used to be Bell Laboratories, which is where they filmed, uh, they filmed movies, radio, they had all kinds of stuff. In fact, they filmed um, the, uh, jazz, the Jazz Singer with Al Jolson, you know the guy who used to do blackface? Yikes. They filmed that there, one of the first motion pictures of all time. Today, it is the West Beth uh, Artist Housing. West Beth Artist Housing uh, because of West Street and Bethune Street, West Beth. Uh, so that's over there. And now we're just walking to the west. We're walking over to the water. And that's kind of it, pretty much. I mean, if you go continue north, you would eventually get into the meatpacking district, which I covered in its own video, so check that video out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the West Village. We got to see some, you know, pretty streets. It's a, it's a bigger neighborhood. We just did a quick walk, all right? So relax, you're probably thinking, but he didn't cover this, he didn't cover this. I didn't walk down Christopher Street, for example. I didn't show you the path station that's been there. Uh, since like the early 1900s. I didn't show you a lot of stuff because, you know, I'm trying to make keep this video under an hour, so relax, chill out. We're walking out to the west side. We're gonna be out on Hudson River Park. We saw the HP Studios, which is pretty cool. I right, we'll walk by that. So as I got to, I'll tell you all the famous people who studied there, Wallace Shawn studied or, or produced there. You know who that is, Stewie? I don't know. He's the guy from uh, Princess Bride, the guy who goes, uh, oh, okay. yeah. Wallace Shawn uh, worked there. Inconceivable, that guy. That was a pretty good impression, right? It was. Thanks, man. So yeah, so now we're crossing the West Side Highway and we're gonna end this over on the Hudson River. You got a great view of New Jersey. You see it behind me, you see the World Trade Center down in Lower Manhattan. This goes all the way up. You have the Hudson River Park, which actually starts down at Battery Park uh, and goes all the way up the West Side up until pretty much 59th Street until it starts up again, kind of as Riverside Park. 
uh, a little bit north of that, also going up the west side. Try not to get killed by bikers when you're here. Bikers are kind of nuts. So here you have a nice little view of the uh, Hudson River, named after Henry Hudson, the guy who uh, discovered you know, Manhattan. In fact, in 1524, Giovanni de Verrazzano was the first one to kind of come here on behalf of the uh, French, but uh, he didn't really explore it like Henry Hudson did. So Henry Hudson is the guy who actually sailed up this whole thing looking for a route to India, didn't find it, went back to the Dutch East India Company who hired him, told him, uh, hey, I didn't find a route to India, but I found this sick island. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's not what we paid you for, you're fired. But they actually came here and settled it and eventually became New Amsterdam. By the way, Henry Hudson ended up dying in Hudson Bay because his, his, uh, his crew mutinied against him because they were freezing and they were like, dude, you're not gonna find this passage. So they sent him packing. They just, they took him off the ship and put him in a boat with his son and just sent him off to die of frostbite and pneumonia or whatever. All right, well, this is a good view. There you got uh, Jersey City. Here you have Hoboken. Go further up, you got more of New Jersey, all that stuff, all here. But uh, we're pretty much done, guys. We made it through West Village. Very nice uh, little walk. Uh, I'm starving, so I'm gonna go get some food here in a second. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Like I said, it got carved out of, of Greenwich Village. Still kind of, some people, old school people, consider it more Greenwich Village too. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, different people have different opinions, but it's a West Village. It's fancier, it's more expensive, it's quieter, which is why people live here. All right, well, um, I don't know, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool little video. I, this one had been kind of like an omission. We had to cover, it's the last kind of uh, downtown neighborhood we had to cover. <sighs> Stewie, what do you think, man? I got everything? I think we got everything. Good. Uh, all right, well, I guess uh, I'm gonna go get some food, maybe some pizza or something and uh, hang out with people. All right, I'm rambling. <laughs> Subscribe, please. Like the video, please. And check out the Patreon, <laughs> please. That's what keeps us uh, eating pizza. And God, I'm rambling. All right, I'm done, man. See y'all later. Sick.